the statement of the law minister to the effect that the union government should have a decisive say in the appointment of judges goes to prove that the BJP government is hell bent on destroying judicial autonomy and to subvert the judiciary into a nominated body of the union government. The Chief Justice himself has resisted the move and it is commendable that the judiciary in general and the Supreme Court in particular have taken a firm stand keeping the spirit of the independence of judiciary high. Not merely members of the union cabinet but even the nominees are trying to middle with the autonomy of the judiciary. Last week, the Vice President attacked the Supreme Court for striking down the NJAC Act of 2015. He even went on to say that he does not agree with the restriction imposed by the Supreme Court, which ensures that the Parliament cannot amend the basic structure of the Constitution. It is rather unfortunate that even the highest office, such as the Vice President, are making certain remarks that go against the Constitution and its spirit. India's identity as a democratic and secular country was molded in the fire of our anti-colonial struggle. The concept of India that is inclusive of different languages and cultures emerged during our national movement. Right now, these very characteristics of India are under a grave threat. The threat is posed by the present generation of those who were psychophants of the empire but betrayers of our struggles. It was those betrayers who murdered the father of our nation. Gandhiji, a practicing Hindu, was killed by the proponents of Hindutva. That is ample proof that Hindutva is not the same as or even related to Hinduism. The religion resorting, resorting to Hindutva efforts are on to create a communal polarization in the country. By creating polarization, a last-ditch effort is being made to diffuse the public anger against the misplaced policies of the union government. The fallout of such anti-people policies are there all around us. Public sector enterprises, which are the wealth of the nation, are being sold off. In the last In the last budget alone, rupees 65,000 crores was sought to be raised through their sale. They say that they do not have money to provide relief to the ordinary people, but they have written off corporate loans to the tune of rupees 11 lakh crores in the last five years alone. This amount would have sufficed to ensure food security to the entire people of the nation. The MGNREGS envisaged by the left as a scheme to aid the rural population in their distress is being scuttled. Allocation for it and work day work days are under it are repeatedly being cut down. The country's development is in doldrums. Figures denote that DGP growth has declined from 7.4% to 4.7%. Industrial growth has plummeted from 2.2% to 0.8%. Infrastructure sector has declined from 19.4% to 9.8%. With regard to foreign exchange reserves too, the country is headed for trouble. Our forex reserves have shrunk from 642.2 billion in 2021 to 528.37 billion US dollar last October. The constant rise of petroleum prices has pushed the people's lives into misery. All this has made 
life extremely difficult for the common man. There is a sharp increase in hunger and poverty. In the global hunger index, we are 107th among 121 nations around the world. 80% of the people pushed into poverty because pushed into poverty because of COVID are in India. Imposition of GST on essential articles has spiked price rise. Last year, India's wholesale inflation has touched a three-decade high. Price rise is as high as 39%. Even amidst such dire circumstances, welfare measures for the poor are being denied. Atrocities are being committed against minorities, women, SCs and STs. The idea of equality is given a go-by. Laws such as CAA, which seeks to alter our secular polity into a religious state, are being introduced. The main issues of the ordinary and the poor are related to their livelihoods. To create better living conditions, we need to forge the unity of the ordinary and the few poor. People's unity has to emerge against the communal agenda that seeks to divide us. It is our duty to resist the backward march of our nation. As far as Kerala goes, we are resisting both communalism and neoliberalism, which are pushing our people into miseries. We are ensuring development and welfare in a communal tension-free atmosphere so that our people can enjoy the fruits of progress and lead peaceful lives. I hope that today in Khammam, the land of people's resistances, we will have the beginning of a new resistance, a resistance to secure the ideals that we fought for in our freedom struggle, a resistance to protect our secularism, our democracy, our constitution, and thereby our nation. I conclude by once again extending greetings to all of you gathered here. Thank you.